HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Hopkins and High School for today's varsity baseball game between the Bridgewater Raynham Warriors and your Hopkins and Hillers. We'll have Bridgewater Raynham's batting order in just one minute. The umpires are going over the ground rules. Coach Simos has been kind enough to make up a ground rule where we'll get a better shot than we did last game. So leading off for Bridgewater Raynham is Jack Berry, followed by Ryan Goonan, Brett Doherty, Nolan Anderson, Chase Chacon, Kyle Brow, that's a great, great baseball name. Austin Hartzell is the designated hitter today, Richie Amaralt, Chris White, Matt Kennedy will not be hitting today because he'll be on the mound. For Hopkinton and their defense today, It'll be Ryan Kester at third base, Ben McKenzie at short, Cole, best player in the league, Glassburn at second base, Brendan Kelly at first base, Drew Rancatori in left, Tommy Ambrosino in center, Cam Jarrett's playing right field today, Ronnie Seamus behind the plate, catching Tyler Doherty, the big right-hander, about ready to begin. We're playing on the turf field today for the last time, thankfully. Not a big fan of it. I know Hopkins didn't spend a lot of money, but it's just not the same as a uh, a dirt and grass playing field. Uh, I think my mother could get a ball between short and third base um, and make it into the outfield, and she's 86 years old. So when the ball's hit on the ground, it's going to scoot, and you see the wall out in left center field, 315 down the lines. The ball will get out there in a hurry, so the outfielder's going to be ready to cut those balls off. You will have some true hops on the infield. Uh, will it, it will be fast. I talked to Cole Glassburn earlier today. I asked him how many errors he was going to make today, and he said uh, none, which means three. And Last year, Bridgewater Raynham beat Hopkinton 8-2. to two. The year before, however, Hopkinton went down to Bridgewater Raynham in early April. It was a bitterly cold day, and Coach Simos threw six pitchers out there, and they won one to nothing. Uh, it was a great victory to be had by the Hillers. So hopefully we'll see some offense today from the Hillers. They got pounded last weekend, 17-1 to by Bishop Fiam, and that's down towards Attleboro. And the weekend before, so a week ago Saturday, they hosted Barnstable, who drove 83.3 miles, and they got pounded 16-1. to It was sort of a not very courteous thing to do but they pounded them 16 to one. Now, so we have a game in common. Bridgewater Raynham beat Barnstable two to one. And Hopkins, as I mentioned, beat Barnstable 16 to one. So something happened there. Either Barnstable didn't throw their number one pitcher against Hopkinton and threw their number one pitcher against Bridgewater Raynham or Somebody's not a very good team. Bridgewater Raynham is two and two. Hopkinton is four and one. Having been beated, beaten Holliston and Ashland. There's a little handshake with the umpire. Coach Simos probably telling the joke before he makes his team hit the field. So rumor has it that the Hopkins and Hillers are rated 17th in the state by Danny Ventura and the Boston Herald. That's just a rumor. 
Uh, don't tell anybody if you're at home. So, HCAM Sports is supported by our viewers and by uh, Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located, of course, at 14 Main Street in downtown Hopkinton. You can find them online at mybillspizza.com. Almost ready for action. And the Hellers take the team, uh, take the field, excuse me. So there's Drew Rancatori, Tommy Ambrosino, Cam Jarrett, Ryan Kester at third, Ben McKenzie at short, Cole Glassburn at second. Brendan Kelly, it's nice to see him out the field, not pitching. Tyler Dory on the mound, and Ronnie Sheamus behind the plate, who's been impressive. It's a... Uh, uh, it's not an accident of wealth. That's a wrong. That's a wrong term. But Coach Simos has three catchers, and uh, he was begging for for one just two years ago when Alex Reynolds uh, was the number one catcher. Young Stevie Simos came in as a sophomore along with Ben McKenzie and Brendan Kelly, so they're in the third year. Uh, Tyler Doherty is going to take his warm-up tosses. We're going to wait for Jack Berry to step to the plate. Oh, Seamus got a pretty good arm. Drew Rancatori can catch. So that's always good. Seamus has got his tools of ignorance on. So watching Tyler Doherty warm up. Got a fastball, a little bit of off speed. Nothing crazy, though. We will have some pitching changes today, I understand. Perhaps five pitchers will throw. Tyler Doherty will go the first two. Of course, that'll be dependent on the score. And we'll see who Jack Breslin's warming up, so he may be the next one out of the pen. Stevie Simos is DHing today and not playing second base, so I have a little meeting on the mound, a little words of encouragement for Ty Doherty. And we're just about ready for first pitch. Unfortunately, Bridgewater Raynham was not courteous enough to put their stats up online, so I have no clue. I'll just assume that the leadoff hitter uh, is decent, but I have no clue as to what they're hitting. Ball up high. It's nice to see Brendan Kelly's dad show up at the game. Crowd is starting to fill in. Counts 1-0. On Berry, just swing and a miss. Counts even. That ball had a little life on it. Just a little bit of life. So we'll see how Dari does. I think this is his second outing of the year, don't quote me. We haven't broadcasted all the games. Here's a ground ball. Over to Glassburn, will he boot it? No, makes the play. Four to three. Sorry, Mrs. Glassburn, but he said he wasn't going to make an error today. One out, we're ready for Ryan Goonan, second baseman. Hitting, I don't know what. Where's number two, as you can see? Ball low. Doherty throwing out of the stretch. Seems to be more and more common these days. There's a fly ball in the center field. Tommy Ambrosino camped under it. He's got it for the second out of the inning. So, of course, you notice relievers when they come into a baseball game pitch out of the stretch. Some say you get more velocity doing it that way. And there's less uh, body movement 
than going out of a full windup. So Doherty to the set, throws, foul back. 0-1-1. Brett Doherty hitting three. He's a, not, a, not a big kid, so we'll see what he can do against Doherty. There's a ground ball over to the right side. Kelly's going to take it himself. One, two, three for the Hillers. And we bet we'll be back for the bottom of the first. White throws the ball down to second. We have Brett Doherty at third base. Jack Perry, the shortstop. Ryan Goonan playing second base. Nolan Anderson playing first base. Kyle Brow, the left fielder. Richie Amaral in center. Chase Chuckrin in right field. Chris White behind the plate catching Matt Kennedy today. Leading off for the Hillers is Mr. All-World, five-tool player, Ben McKenzie, three-year starter. Played a lot of his AAU ball out of Nakona. Will be heading to Bowdoin College in the fall as he's going to be a polar bear. And he takes strike one. He's been the leadoff hitter, hitter for three years. Extremely fast base runner. Probably even a little quicker on turf. We'll have to see him. White backs off. Kenny backs off the mound. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kennedy pitching out of the full windup. Gets the sign from White. A little off speed pitch or strike two. Sort of surprised Ben a little bit. Fastball, curveball. So not a not a big kid, Kennedy. Doesn't look like he's gonna blow anybody away. There's a ground ball, the shortstop. Picked up, throw to first, just gets him. There you see the speed by Ben McKenzie. Barry had to get get rid of that ball quick. That was by a half a step. He got McKenzie. Here's Stevie Simos. He's hitting 625. He's the coach's son. Wearing number two today. Has excellent power, excellent speed on the bases. Started off with a breaking pitch. First strike. So some oohs and ahs from the. Hopkins and dugout. But Kennedy doesn't seem to be afraid to throw that breaking pitch. Stevie Simos can play some great mind games with the pitcher. Calling timeout. He hasn't been hit by a pitch this year. He was hit 14 times. Probably led the whole country in hit by pitches. There's a breaking ball in the dirt. So he hasn't been hit by one. He does have a home run to his credit this year, along with Ben McKenzie. So there's some pop in the the top of the order. Stevie Simos will always take that extra base. There's a foul off the third base side. Jack Breslin getting on that ball. When you ride the pine, you got to do something. Stevie Simos waiting for the pitch from Kennedy. Looks like he's going for a grip, so it could be an off-speed off pitch. Not that I'm tipping pitches from where I'm at, but he spent a little, little too much time in the glove. Looks like he's going to try and throw another breaking pitch. He's taking a little bit too long. Stevie makes call time. Nope. Ball in the dirt. So Stevie will work the count, take his walk. A walk will almost result in a, a stolen base, so it's as good as a double.
There's a break and pitch outside. Ben McKenzie's dad is now occupying the third base coaches area. The pitch from Kennedy down low. There's a walk. Tommy Ambrosino or Ambrosoni. I'm sorry at home. If you're his mom and dad, I'm going to butcher this all year. But he's playing center field today. Played really well last summer for Milford post-59. Stevie Simos got a lead. We'll see. There's a pickoff over there. Back in time. Easy. Quick feet by Kennedy. So Stevie will have to be careful. Just got a two-step lead over there. Well, Kennedy knows he's there. Maybe he's got a scouting report on Stevie Simos. This will be the third time Bridgewater Raynham has faced the Hopkins and Hillers in the last three years. So Ambersoni is a great bunter. There goes Stevie Simos, ball in the dirt. Gets away from White. Stevie Simos turns second, heads back. So whether it's by stolen base, pass ball, wild pitch, Stevie Simos is now in scoring position. Oh, Tommy will bunt at any time. Last year, with the bases loaded, he he suicide squeezed to win a game, which was probably one of your most exciting plays in baseball. Kennedy rotating the ball behind his back, where Stevie can see it. There's a ground ball to the right side. Picked up by Gudun, and he does not get him. Beats it out. First and third. Gunan made a nice attempt at that play at second base, but Tommy just too fast, has that extra step out of the left-handed batter's box. Had been Tommy been a right-handed hitter, he probably would have been out. We have first and third. We'll see whether... Coach Simos puts a play on here and wants Tommy to run. Tommy's got a good lead over there. Throw over, back easily. Maybe that was Kennedy's dummy move. It was We'll see if he's got something better in his arsenal. Throw the plate. Ball thrown through. Runner safe. Stolen base for Tommy Ambrosoni. Joe Rancatori. He's got two runs in scoring position. That's the second stolen base for Tommy Ambrosoni. Drew Rancatori hitting in the four spot today. Swing and a miss. Bridgewater Rain, I'm already in the first inning. Playing with the infield in, they want to cut the run off at the plate. Maybe they're anticipating a Low scoring game. Counts 0 and 1. Kennedy to the set. Goes home. Breaking pitch. There's a strike. Kennedy looks like he'll throw that breaking pitch at any time. It's great at this age if somebody's got their breaking pitch and they can throw it with. Control. There's a swing and a miss. Strike three. Two down now. Infielders can back up. 
Ronnie Seamus steps up to the plate. He's hitting 667 on the year. Cole Glassburn's hitting 750, but he's only got six plate appearances. It's a breaking pitch. A little bit outside. Seamus only a sophomore. Hitting in the five hole and starting behind the plate. That's impressive. He's going to be a good ball player for a long time. Simos at third, Ambersoni at second base. Ball's upstairs. Base hit will definitely score two with that type of speed on the bases. Looked like Kennedy reached back for a little extra on that pitch right there. Goes back to the breaking pitch. Down low. Coach Simos does run the show. He'll relay all the signs. Kennedy goes home. Fastball. Strike. Deuces across the board, two and two, two out. Very humid day here. Temperature at game time is 59. Seamus calls time. The umpire says pitch. Kennedy's very deliberate taking those signs. That was wrong with the count. Now it's two and two. Threw the curveball, then followed up with a fastball. Oh, he's a confident kid. I'm not seeing the coach. Kearney over there calling signs in. And there's a foul tip. Strike three. No runs scored. The end of one. Nothing, nothing. Doherty out there for a second inning. He'll be facing the four, five, and six hitter. Nolan Anderson, Chase Chuckran, and Kyle Brow. Anderson looks like he's got some size to him. We'll see how this battle goes. Hopkins stranded two runners at last inning. Kennedy worked out of a jam. There's a first pitch strike. It's like Doherty's a little deceptive. He goes to the plate a little slow and then he humps his fastball up there. There's a pop up over the left side. Kester underneath it. Makes the catch for out number one. One pitch, one out. Sorry, two pitches, one out. That ball was up a mile high. Jack Breslin in the bullpen warming up. Doherty was due to go two innings today. He's had a nice go of it so far. Chuckran plays right field. Is a pop-up. Doherty calls for it. He makes the play. One pitch, one out. One pitch, two out, excuse me. Having the ball around. Kyle Brow stepping to the plate to left field at number 15. That's a strike poured right down Broadway. Darty's really been efficient today, I gotta say. I'm talking to nobody over here, my color commentator who's uh off doing the girls' softball game today. There's a fly ball down the right field line. Kelly going for down for it. Makes the catch in fair territory. Three out. 
We'll be back to the bottom of the second in just a moment. Ryan Kessler stepping to the plate, hitting 429 on the year. He's a senior. His sister Tara is playing on the other field. Still haven't got a report on the girls' softball who are really lighting up the TVL. They're just killing people. It's not even funny. There's a strike. Kester took over third base last year from Dylan O'Leary, who went out to UMass Amherst. Dylan was injured last year with some type of modified Tommy John issue. I wrote to his dad today to see how he's doing, see if he ran into my son out there all year. There's a fly ball in the shallow right field. Googling out there and makes the catch. One out. So nobody's really crushing the ball today. Some pop-ups. Easy ground balls. Here comes some power. Nice to see Brendan Kelly up there with a bat in his hand. The big six foot two, 220 pounder. Takes ball up high, heading to Stonehill College to show off his wing down there, be a Skyhawk. He looks like a Skyhawk, doesn't he? Takes that breaking pitch outside. It's up in the count. When he gets a hold of one, boy, that ball just flies. Might see those folks out in right field there. They may have to watch out if he gets a hold of one. Ball low. So will Coach Simos turn Brendan loose? Ball low. Takes the walk. Cam Jarrett steps to the plate. He's a newcomer this year. Sophomore, a sophomore. Hitting 333. Sophomore's making a big contribution this year to Coach Simos' team to throw over. Brendan's back easy. They've seen enough throws over from Kennedy to See how kind of see how big of a greedy lead they can get. Brendan Kelly not blessed with uh, track speed gets a secondary lead ball low. You'll notice the batters don't look down at Coach McKenzie; they're looking right at Coach Simos. Coach Simos co uh, teaches. AP U.S. History. There's a strike on the outside corner. Very well respected coach around these parts. Occasionally talks on the banquet circuit. Played four years at Boston College. Regardless of what their record is at the end of the year, the kids will definitely Gain some baseball knowledge from Coach Simos. Ball upstairs. Coach Simos likes to work on those fundamentals. He wants each kid to win their own particular battle. Wants them to compete. And they're always competing. Kelly taking off. Fly ball on the right field line. That's going to be foul. So they had a little hit and run on. Was that Brendan?
Brendan's only chance. Are they going to send him again? There's a throw over. Back easy. So we've seen the best of Kennedy's moves. He's got, got nothing better. Well, maybe the Hillers can get a little extra half-step lead. Coach Simos is never afraid to get the run game going. Ball low. Jarrett working the count against Kennedy. Coach Simos wanted his players to wear the high stockings this year. He's a traditionalist. Last two years, the kids were bucking him a little bit, wearing those pants down low like you see the Bridgewater Raynham players. There's the throw over, bounces to Anderson over there. Couple of, couple of beefy kids over there, Anderson and Kelly. Tons of fun over at first base today. And Kelly takes off, ball low, takes it for a walk. Coach Kearney gonna come out and talk to Kennedy. He knows the ever so dangerous Cole Glassburn is coming to the plate. Hitting 750, but I'll remind everybody he's only had six plate appearances. So it's a very small sample size. Don't let that high batting average fool you. But Cole will tell you himself, he's a Ty Cobb-like hitter. Hits for high, high average in his own mind. Cole didn't play Little League here. He moved in from Clarkville, Maryland, I'm told. I got that scoop before a game. We have a little warm-up activity down the right field line, left-hander. Can't see a number. Don't have a roster, so see what Cole can do with the bat. There's a ball hit down the left field line, and that's fair. Kelly's turning to third. He's going to go home, throw into third base, not in time. And Cole's got a two-bagger and an RBI. That ups his batting average. He's going to be hitting 825 now. For all the folks that are at home giving him a standing ovation, Nice piece of hit and fought that pitch off. And they turn the lineup over. Runners on second and third for Ben McKenzie. Infielder, second and shortstop playing at around double play depth. In on the corners. Kennedy doesn't like what he sees. Very deliberate. Maybe he's given his teammates some time to heat up down in the bullpen. There's a fly ball out of play. Not sure of Jarrett's speed, don't know whether Coach Slam also put the contact play on. Jarrett doesn't have a really greedy lead. Nice block by White. Still not afraid to throw his breaking pitch. He's in a little bit of a a little bit of a troubling situation here with runners in scoring position and Ben McKenzie at the plate. It's hitting four hundred, but he hits for power. Ball in the dirt. Nice block by White. Ball's in the turf, I should say. 
Tomorrow will be up on field two. But by the time you're viewing this, that game will be over. Playing the Westwood Wolverines. First base is open, so see what Coach Kearney is going to do with Ben McKenzie. Pitch around him. Good take. Ball just a little bit outside from my vantage point. Counts three and one. Right field, they're playing so deep out there. There's a strike on the outside corner. He's got to be at least 300 feet down, down in right field. Ben strong, but I don't think he's that strong. The left fielder ought to watch out. The center fielder ought to watch out, but right fielder is in no man's land out there. Ball low. Bases are filled. The left hand, left hander is a left hander seems to be warmed up and ready to go. Coach Kearney directing the umpires, the outfielders, where to position for Stevie Simos. Now the right fielder is playing in the right spot, but the left fielder is. Uh, Really, really shallow. You should be expecting last year's graduates, class of 2008, 2018, to be showing up pretty soon. There's a strike. I'm not worried about Stevie Simos, no matter what the count is. He rarely strikes out because he's got to see his father on the way back to the bench. Stevie Simos and Ben McKenzie will not be roommates next year at Bowdoin. Maybe they'll have dinner together. There's a break and pitch just up high. Both will be playing baseball. Glad they're continuing their career. They've been a lot of fun to watch from Little League all the way up. Very good friends, along with Brendan Kelly, the three Musketeers. Is a strike. Jared on third, Glasper on second, Ben McKenzie at first. Bridgewater Raynham playing for a double play. Although anything on the ground would be tough to get Stevie Simos. There's a ground ball foul. He's deceptively fast. Six twenty five with a couple of doubles and a home run. They've got the book on Stevie Simos. Coach Kearney's been coaching, like I mentioned, for twenty five years. There's a ball hit down the left field line. That's out of play. Kennedy's pitch count is creeping up there. He got out of trouble in the first inning, stranding Stevie Simos and Tommy Ambersoni. Threw quite a few pitches. There's a ball in the dirt. Counts two and two. Kennedy. Kennedy's in a, a little bit of a pickle. That's beaten down the first baseline. Picked up. Kennedy's got to squeeze it. That's your 45-foot base hit. Jarrett scores from third. That breaks the ice. It's one to nothing. Killed some, killed some gophers there. 
Coach Kearney coming out. They're going to make a change. I'm told the score is two to nothing, and that's going to be all for Kennedy. We'll be back now pitching for Bridgewater Raynham, Shane Handrahan. Watching him warm up. A little fastball. Breaking pitch. Umpire having a little chat with him. See if he pitches out of the stretch or the full wind up. Bases are loaded. There's a bunt. As I mentioned earlier, Tommy Ampersoni will bunt at any time. I think Coach Simos went down and talked to Cole Glassburn and told him that the bunt play was going to be on. Coach Simos says every team needs a little crafty little lefty. One that will leave you sh shaking your head on the way back to the dugout. Here's a ground ball to the left side. Picked up by the shortstop. He's got to squeeze it. And a run scores. It's three to nothing. Stevie Simos erased it. Second base. This will be a running situation. Ben McKenzie on third base. Tommy Ambersoni at first base. Drew Rankatori is a pickoff over. Tommy's going to watch that move. It's always tough to read a left hander. That was a snap throw over. Uh, White wants to have a conversation with Handerhan. He's wearing a path out to the mound today. How about just throw strikes? That's the conversation. Let's see if Tommy will. There's a snap over. Gets back pretty easy. That one was thrown with a little bit more mustard. Vahandrahan worries too much about Ambersoni. He forgets about Rancatori. That looked like a balk. Oh. Ben McKenzie thrown out at the plate. Picked off. Tempted pick off, throw home. Top of three. Tyler Doherty out there. He's going to go an extra inning. Since he's had an easy time his first two, he's going to face bottom part of the Bridgewater lineup. Austin Hartzell. Richie Amaralt. It's a strike on the outside corner. And Chris White, the catcher. Ty Doherty's been impressive. And Bridgewater Raynham has not. The ball outside, one and one. It's about nine seconds between pitches. Is a swing and a miss. Doherty getting the ball, throwing the ball. Not too much thinking. Ball fouled off. Coach Simos has got to be happy with Tyler Doherty's performance. Jack Breslin is once again down on the left field side warming up. Ball high. Score from the girls' game, they're leading four to nothing against Norton, which was supposed to be a battle. You want to go see some good softball, watch those Lady Hillers. They are tearing it up. 
that game is moving right along. Unlike this one, that last inning was slow. The first base runner against Doherty. Free pass. Richie Amaral is going to step in against Doherty. See what kind of lead. They'll try up Doherty. Goes to the plate. There's a ball just inside. Again, we don't have any stats on the Bridgewater Raynham team. There's a foul ball. Umpire's earning his money today. He's not letting the players get those foul balls. Most umpires don't hustle like that. So far, Darty hasn't looked over at first base. There's a throw over. Hearts are loading back easily. There's a fly ball to right field. Jared under it, makes the catch. One down. I don't know why they're throwing the ball around with a runner on base. Um, maybe they've been lulled to sleep. Chris White, the catcher. He's really had to work hard today with Kennedy. This hit by batter, hit by pitch. His teammates love it. They want him to wear it. The only one not cheering is Chris White. The rest of his teammates are cheering. They're back to the top of the lineup, Jack Berry. Darty in his first bit of trouble. He's got runners on first and second with one out. Ball upstairs, straighten Barry out. Coach Simos looking on. He'll have a quick hook with Tyler. There's a ball low, 2 0. Jack Breslin's been warming up. Since the start of the game. Throw to the plate. It's up high, 3-0. and oh. Barry the shortstop. Got to count his way. Here's a strike. He's taken all the way. Kester playing even with the bag. Ball. There's a walk. Coach Simos is still sitting on his pail. Now he's making a slow walk to the mound. Going to have a quick chat with Tyler. Might give him one more hitter. Coach Simo's telling his outfielders to hit their cutoff men should the ball get out in the outfield. Again, working with the fundamentals. There's a fly ball to right field. Jarrett underneath it. There's a throw to the plate. Not cut, throw through, runner advances. And now they got him. They peeled the play, sacrifice fly, 
did not happen. Don't score the run. The runner left early from third, and he is out. Two, two, five. Bottom of the third, what you saw happen to end that inning was Coach Simos implored his outfielders to hit their cutoff men. Jarrett caught that fly ball, overthrew the cutoff man to the plate. The runner from third went home, but immediately they spotted the runner leaving early from third base. They appealed the play to third, and the runner banged out. The umpire banged the runner out. So no run scored. It's still 3 nothing, in the bottom of the third. There's a bunt. Pulled back. Drew Rancatori was left standing at the plate uh, when Ben McKenzie got thrown out at home on that weird pickoff. There's a breaking pitch. He went around. Previous inning, hand or hand, picked over to first base. And Ben McKenzie w ran home, but the first baseman, Anderson, threw him out. It was a nice bender. Lefty-lefty matchup here. Andrew Hens throws from a weird angle. Rancatori spoils that pitch off. If I were a lefty here, I'd be bailing. Coach Simos wants... Rankatori to win this battle. Always encouraging his players. Rankatori calls time. After yesterday's rain out, we got some beautiful weather today. Although it's a little bit little bit humid. There's a strike dropped by the catcher. White picks it up, throws down to Anderson, retires Rankatori. We'll score that a strikeout. Two to three. Ronnie Sheamus to the plate. Got a lot of baseball to play as a sophomore. Coach Simos has got confidence in them to start. Heard a lot about this kid. Little League news. There's a strike. Lots of kids are playing club ball these days, AAU ball, whatever you want to call it. And leaving Little League in the rearview mirror, a little bit more competitive. Just break a pitch up high. So that's depleting the quality of the Little League teams, my son umpires and has for years just saying, Dad, it's awful. Foul ball back. They're not focusing on the fundamentals. Competition isn't very good. So you find that better competition at club level where you got kids from five different towns. There's a foul ball. Watch out, Coach Simos. Kids from five towns assembled on a on a team, you're gonna get some real competitive baseball. Same thing is happening with girls softball. They're playing a lot of club club ball. So don't be surprised. The foul ball out of play. Watch out for my car. Ooh. It's called the glass company. Don't be surprised if you see some Little League mergers. In this case, it would be logical for Hopkinton to merge with Ashland. Hopkinton didn't, didn't even send a Little League team to the Williamsport tournament last year. There's a breaking pitch. Ball up the middle, slowly hit by Berry, and he gets Sheamus by a full step.
two down. Ryan Kester to the plate. He's got some pop in his bat. The system might have more pop. Just teasing. Hit 429. Three ribbies. Waiting for his first extra base hit. That's a half swing, strike. Anderhan reminds me of that lefty they faced from Duxbury. There's a foul ball off to the right to end their season last year. I think his name was Coons. He had a deceptive delivery. Just stymied the Hillers, and they brought in Malampi to close things out. Brendan Kelly pitched a great game. Here's a ground ball. Picked up by Handerhan over to Anderson to retire the side. So we'll be back for the top of the fourth. Top of the fourth for Bridgewater Raynham. They're down by three runs. Two walks by Tyler Doherty. Oh, not a bad day. He got himself a, a little bit of trouble, but was bailed out on that appeal play down the third base, which you rarely see, rarely successful. Now, Jack Breslin in the pitch. His mom, Jen, is involved in just about every sport there is in town at the board level. They call him Jerry, and there's a breaking pitch over for a strike. He's up in the count to Doherty. And there's going to be a strike. Well, they appealed down. The first base umpire said he didn't go. I thought the umpire had lifted his hand as if he was going to ring him up. There's a foul ball off to the right. Well, this turf field isn't giving up a lot of foul balls. Unlike before when it was, was grass, you'd lose a lot of balls. That ball is just low. President looks like he comes right over the top. He's pitching out of the stretch. It could be just a pitching coach philosophy thing, or there's a breaking pitch, and he's rung up. See you later. It was a nice pitch to admire, I must say. So I can't fault Doherty. Just buckled his knees. Nolan Anderson hits the ball off Breslin. Breslin picks it up, throws to Kelly, and he gets him. Breslin fielding his position. Ball hit up the middle. He knocked it down. Had sense enough to find it. Picked it up and threw it over to Brendan Kelly. Two down. There's a line drive in the left field. Caught by Drew Rancatori. That'll retire the side. At the end of three and a half, it's three nothing, Hopkinton. HKM Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizzeria Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street. Find them online at mybillspizza.com. Heading to the bottom of the fourth, Brendan Kelly going to step in against Handrahan, who so far has quieted the Hiller bats. Chukrin was playing about 10 feet deeper for Ben McKenzie. And 
um, he's got a right-handed power hitter up. So that ball is inside. Now Chukrin is backing up a little bit. Brendan Kelly in his sophomore year hit about a 360-foot shot to dead center field up at field two. At least his dad claims it was 360. I'll agree, though. It was a bomb. Really wish players wouldn't run in front of the camera. So Handerhan's got that compact motion. And he gets a strike right down the middle. Here's a breaking pitch. That's what those crafty little lefties do to other lefties. There's a base hit down the left field line. That's going to scoot to the wall. Kelly's going to get at least two bases. And he's going for three. Throw to the bag. Not in time. Triple for Brendan Kelly. I thought he had two for sure, but wave him in Wendell over there. Third base, Coach McKenzie. Had him wheeling around second base. If I were the third baseman, I would have dove away from that freight train coming in on me. That went all the way to the wall. Nice piece of hitting by Brendan Kelly. That was the first hard hit ball off Andrahan. That ball was scalded too. Come on, fellas, I got uh, pizza to eat. No more mound visits. Jarrett stepping in with Kelly on third base. H Camp Sports is supported by our viewers and by Bill's Pizza Kitchen and Grill, located at 14 Main Street in downtown Hopkinton. You can visit them online at mybillspizza.com. I think I'll do that after the game. Nice, small, well-done bacon pizza. That ball is upstairs. Tough to lay off that pitch. That was his sucker pitch. Letter high. Hand to hand, put a little extra on that pitch. A little bit of extra mustard is an errant ball. There's a ground ball. Kelly's going to stay. Picked up and thrown over to first for the out. Nice play by Doherty. Held, the, held Kelly at third base and threw over. Here's the early inning hitting star, Cole Glassburn, who doubled down the left field line earlier. There's a ground ball in the right field. That's going to score Kelly. And he's two for two. Well, I guess Cole didn't stick his foot in his mouth as he usually does. Didn't say he was going to get any hits. I asked him how many bags he was going to swipe today. He says, have you ever seen me run? I said, unfortunately, I have. Well, let's see if Coach Simos lets him go. <laughs> and he's, <laughs> he's creeping off the bag. He looks like he's very athletic and would run very quickly, but he's not very fast at all. And he's got a lefty to look at over there. And there's a snap throw over to Anderson. Ball gets away. But Cole is uh, going to stay right where he is. 
Oh, there's one out. Glassburn gets another ribby in the scorebook. There's a snap over. Cole just daring Handry Hand. Oh, another mound visit. Come on. That's got to be the eighth mound visit for White. I don't know whether the pickoff calls are coming from the bench or not. But there have been a lot of them today. There's a snap throw over. Glassburn back easily. If if Anderhan only knew how slow Cole is, he wouldn't be wasting his time. And that's self-reporting scouting report from Cole Glassburn himself. I'm really, really slow. He's baiting him over. You know, bad things can happen when you keep picking over. Throw the ball away and Cole could be standing on third base. At least give Ben McKenzie a chance. There's a ground ball. That's through the hole in the left field. That'll bring Glassburn to second, McKenzie to first. That ball had a little sizzle. There you saw how quick the ball got through the infield. If that was on turf, that could have got knocked down by the shortstop. Oh, my goodness. We're going to take a break after this uh, mound visit here. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Back at the library, there was a little mound visit from the coach. Gave some words of encouragement to Handerhan. He's facing Stevie Simos. Glassburn on second, Ben McKenzie in first. I swear if there's one more mound visit, I'm leaving. There's a breaking pitch down low. Stevie watched that one all the way in. Handerhan does not have bad stuff. He's sneaky quick with his fastball. He just ought to use it. Ball low. Anderson playing behind Ben. Ben you get a nice juicy lead over there. Infield playing back. The outfielder playing Stevie very much to pull. He's not that big of a pull hitter. Ball three. Stevie's more of a gap hitter. Ball in the dirt. That's going to load him up. Tommy Ambersoni up with the bases juiced. But you saw him last inning, or last time up. He did attempt a bunt down the third baseline. It's not beyond him to just drop one down any time. There's a strike. Coach Simos barking out orders to the uh, to the runners. He's got some experience out there. There's a ball outside. Bridgewater Raynham's going to play 
in on the turf. I was going to say in on the grass, but there is none. Any ball hit on the turf is going to scoot through. Ball is outside. Got warm-up activity in the Bridgewater rain and bullpen. Andrew Hand finds himself in a little bit of a pickle. Goes to the plate. Ball in the dirt. Nice block by White. Having control issues, Andrew Hand. He's got some help down the first baseline. Ready to come in. Got the uh, swing away from Coach Simos. Balls hit out of play, foul behind us. Balls hit over to the left side. Third baseman and the left fielder going at it. Neither gets it. Good hustle by Bridgewater Raynham. Way to spoil that pitch up. There's a fly ball in the left field. Left fielder camps under, gets it. Glass bird speed, he just stays right where he is. Josh Fisher heading down to the bullpen to warm up. Breslin will have another inning. Here's my favorite player for this year's Hopkins and Hill is Robbie Paglialuca. Pags. Always seems to hit in the clutch. He's a fan favorite, and he's my favorite. He's swinging. He's not looking. Pag's got some ducks on the pond, finds himself behind the count. If Handrahan can get out of this inning without any damage, he will have done a nice job. Looking in for the sign. Steps off the rubber. He's got some communication issues with White for whatever the reason. It's a breaking pitch outside. One and one. Right fielder is playing so far to the to the line there. The ball high, it's leaving a huge gap in right center field. Huge. I don't think I've ever seen a right fielder play that far over to the right side with a right-handed hitter. Up. I mean, any ball hit over there, Pags might get an inside the park home run. That's a ball upstairs and away. Andrew Hand not happy with himself, finds himself behind the count. You heard him grunt a little bit on that pitch. Wanted to put a little bit of extra on it. Know whether we can get a shot of that right fielder to see where he's playing, but my goodness. There's a swing and a miss. I think the count is full. Runners are taken off. There's a fly ball in the right field. 
He's going to have to come in on that one. And he makes the grab. The bottom of four. It's three to nothing. Hopkinton. Top of the fifth inning. Got a replacement on the mound for Jack Breslin, Josh Fisher. Trains out of Winning Pitchers Academy in Framingham, Mass. I've known this young man for, oh gosh, I don't want to even admit how long I've known him, but at least 10 years. Really, really has worked hard, as hard as I've seen a kid work to improve his game. He was very, very raw as a young kid. And every year he continued to get better and better and better. And now he finds himself as a sophomore on the varsity team as the club's number three. A nice smooth delivery for a lefty, throws a fastball, slider. Told me a change up, but we'll see. Had a little chat with him before the game. Ball's hit over to the right side, and that's going to be out of play. One on one. Contrasting delivery styles. Josh Fisher and Handrahan. Handrahan was a little herky jerky and short arm of the ball. Josh's got a nice, smooth, lefty delivery. Gets that ball really far back behind his knee. Three quarter delivery. Count is two and one. Ball foul back. Kyle Brow. The left fielder. There's a breaking pitch. Just fouls it off. Good pitch selection there. Coach Simos calls the pitches. He's not afraid to go back to back with the breaking stuff. There's a fly ball out in the right field. Glass burn out to get it. Squeezes it for out number one. See that extra life on that last mile of Josh Fisher's fastball? Must be difficult for the, the hitter. Sees it come out of his hand and it's by him before he knows it. I don't know what they were talking about. There may have been a catcher's interference play there. Runners on first base. He had to get there somewhere. Fouled back. So maybe Ronnie Sheamus reached out for the ball and the batter's bat tipped his glove. That's interference and it's an automatic award of the base. Ball hit foul. So we've seen a couple of unusual plays today. We've seen a appeal play at third base. We just had a catcher's interference. Oh, that looked nice to me. I don't know, is the umpire getting tired? Or 
That looked like a perfect pitch. That was too close to take if I'm the hitter. Yeah, sit down. Take that. Take that. Oh, now there's two out. Little throw over to first base, sort of a I, I know you're there throw. So Chris White ought to be tired from all that. Uh, well, that that looked really, really good from my vantage point. All that walking from home plate to the pitcher's mound today. White must have taken 10 trips. That includes the ones he took with his coach. There's a fly ball to the left field. That's fairly deep. And that ball is going to go over the head of Rancatori. It's going to hit the cutoff man, McKenzie. Well, McKenzie bobbles it a little bit. That's a double for White. Aggressive base running by... Bridgewater rain in, but there were two outs, so they were going on contact. And we're back to the top of the order with Jack Berry. Little Josh Fisher just has to bear down here and concentrate on the hitter. There's a strike. Fisher looks really, really smooth out there on the mound. Nothing nicer than a a smooth left-hander's delivery. That ball's in the dirt. Play to the plate. It's not going to be in time. It's a wild pitch. Update on the score. At the end of the last inning, I said it was three to nothing. It was four to nothing. So now it's four to one. No bullpen activity, and there's a fly ball hit down the right field line, foul. Jarrett gets the ball in. Ball a little bit low. Counts 2-2. Two, two. There's a breaking pitch. Just a little bit high. Ball's hit out in the right field. That's going to drop down for a base hit. That was sort of an in-betweener for Jarrett. Ball doesn't bounce much on the turf, this turf anyway. It's not like the old Sky Dome. Well, Josh Fisher will keep the runner close. Ball up a little bit high. He's getting squeezed a little bit, my opinion. Here's a ground ball to third base, picked up by Kester. Throws over to Kelly for the third out of the inning. The end of four and a half, it's 5-2. Just to recap the score, I'm falling asleep here a little bit. It's 4-2, not 5-2. Connor Walsh in for Handrahan, thankfully. Bobby McGuire now hitting for Sheamus, so he'll take 
Sheamus is positioned behind home plate. In the top half of the next inning. Walsh has uh, got a little beef out there. Doesn't throw particularly hard for a kid this size, but we'll see what he does live. Ball down low. Hopkinton girls defeated Norton 5-2, to two, which was supposed to be a tough game. There's a swing and a miss. Tom Nappy and I battled to see who was going to cover that game, and he won. He covered it. Exciting game. Walsh comes right over the top. Nothing three-quarter about his delivery. Nice game, girls. Ball's fouled back. Well, Bobby McGuire will get some stats on him. It's the first time I've seen this young man this year. That ball is up high. He's a junior. He doesn't have a stat yet. Non-conference game. Coach Simos wanting to get as many kids in as he can. That ball's low. And Bobby McGuire takes a walk. So Maguire on first, Connor Walsh throws over. Maguire back in time. Again, these kids run in front of the camera. Have our camera guy stick out his leg the next time they do it. John Ritz on camera today. My buddy John Fisher, the ball's thrown over. To a replacement first baseman, since we don't have the roster, we don't know who he is. But he has uh, replaced Anderson over at first. Ball is in there for a strike on the inside corner. I don't know, that looked a little funky move there. It was an odd pickoff move. I don't know whether he stepped off or not, but there was no balk call. You have to disengage from the rubber if you want to throw over. There's a strike. Warming up, Walsh was spiking quite a few balls in the dirt. Or the turf, excuse me. That's what will happen with somebody that throws straight over the top. If they can't find their release point, they get themselves in trouble. There's a throw over. Not in time. Bridgewaters must have thrown over today maybe a dozen times so far. There's a breaking pitch and Kester's got to sit down. Set him up. Fastball, 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 curveball. Brendan Kelly's going to get a chance to look at somebody other than a lefty. There's a throw over again. Two run game. Ball that gets away from the. There's a throw over again. He's back in easily. They got 17 base coaches in the dugout, all yelling back like they should. There's runners going. Swing and a miss, throw down to second base, not in time. He 
head first slide by McGuire. Brendan gave himself up at the plate, just swung through. And now he's got a chance to knock in another run. Tripled his last time up down the left field line. It's a ball in the dirt. Nice stop by White. Can't wait to get up to field two tomorrow in the new perch that was built before the season began. We'll call it a crow's nest, a perch, whatever. That's down low again. Walsh, Walsh is going to try and find that release point. A lot of balls are going down in the right there, like in the dirt, and that gets past White. And up to third goes McGuire. For everybody at home, you saw that ball spiked. About a 58-foot fastball. Ball that hit, hits the backstop does act kind of true. There isn't any funky bounces back there. So the runner at third is going to make sure it's through if he's going to take off. That ball's up high. And Brendan Kelly's going to take a walk. So what is Coach Simos going to do? Is he going to put a play on? They're going to want to call in Barry. Going to have a conversation. Bringing the infielders in. What are they going to do? Are they going to throw through if Brendan takes off? Well, they got the entire town of Bridgewater at the mound. What's the discussion? Are you going to throw through or are you not going to throw through? Is the shortstop going to cut the ball off? try and get the runner who may be leading off third base. I don't think Coach Simos with the score, just two runs, is going to try to send the runner from third. I think they're just going to let Brendan go, try and swipe the bag. Jared at the plate. Walked earlier in the game, a throw over. Not in time. Are they playing the same play as they did before when Ben McKenzie was on third base? Pick off throw and hope the runner goes to the to the plate and throw down. It'd be tough with a lefty first baseman there. There's a ball down low. They did catch McKenzie at the plate. He picked over. And the first baseman, Anderson, the righty, threw home and got the speedy McKenzie. That ball's in there for a strike. They've yet to... Ooh, that just missed. If I'm the Bridgewater Random coach, I want that pitch. But since I'm a homer, it wasn't even close. Brendan Kelly doesn't have a particularly large lead. He throws over Walsh. Brendan's back easily. It's really slowing the game down, all these pickoff. The infielders got to get tired. They want to move the game along. Throw through, and it's cut by the shortstop. McGuire doesn't move, and now they get runners at second and third. So two men in scoring position for Jarrett. Now the Bridgewater Raynham is going to bring 
their infielders in on the cut of the turf. So Bridgewater Rainham cut that ball off before it went to second. Hoping to see if McGuire was taken off for the plate, which he wasn't. And there's a throw over, and that ball just dribbles away. You rarely see a pickoff throw over to third, but that was called. and Seemed to be really, really concerned with Hopkinton's base runners. I don't think I've ever seen so many pickoff attempts in a game. Somebody might balk. Coach McKenzie talking to McGuire as he's drifting down the line. There's a breaking ball upstairs. Walsh wanted it. Didn't get it. Connor Walsh, the big, tall right-hander for the Bridgewater Raynham Trojans. Finds himself in trouble with Brendan Kelly at second base. And Bobby McGuire at third. That ball is upstairs. Jared will take a walk and now the bases are polluted. Juiced. One down for Cole Glassburn. He's perfect on the day. Look at how deep the, if they only knew, look at how deep that right fielder is playing for Cole Glassburn. He's got some pop balls hit behind us. There was no take in that pitch. He went ripping. He's got good pop. He squares it up. That ball in the dirt, the umpire says he went. Cole says in his mind, I didn't go. From here, it looked like the umpire had the right call. He finds himself down the count, 0-2. Oh ball upstairs. White fakes the throw down to third. Not a standing room only crowd here today as the Norton girls prepare to, for that long drive back home with a 5-2 to two loss. Sorry, girls. There's a swing and a miss. Got him with a breaking pitch. So he's out of a little bit of trouble, and he's facing trouble in Ben McKenzie. Runners will be off on contact. Any ball hit to the gap, the runner will score from first base if he's got any speed. Nobody's playing behind the runner at first, so he can get a lead halfway to second. I mean, a bigger lead than that. Ball inside. 2-0. and oh. Tom Nappy wrapping things up. Down at the softball field, should be joining me anytime. Walsh delivers. Ball's low. 3 0. Walsh seems like he wants to throw the ball through the wall. If he can just find his spot, he might be better off. Walk, that'll score a run. And you go from a little bit of trouble to a lot of trouble. Stevie Simos. Alex Barker Hook heading down towards the bullpen. There's another mound visit. Stevie's got two walks and a single on the day, I'm told. And that's going to be all for Walsh. We're going to have a new pitcher, and we'll be back. My name's Kurt. 
My name is Nina. Uh, Kai? I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H-Camp. Hey, I want to be, uh, camp. We love H-Camp. And I volunteer for H-Camp TV. And I watch H-Camp TV. And I love H-Camp TV. And I love H-Camp TV. We love H-Camp TV. Austin Hartzell now in the pitch for Bridgewater Raynham, replacing Connor Walsh. It's their fourth pitcher of the day. And he's facing trouble with the bases loaded and Stevie Simos to the plate. Right fielder is playing properly right now. It's a fastball called strike. Stevie can hit the fastball with the best of them. He's played in tournaments across the country, down south, Georgia, Kentucky. He's seen some gas. There's a fly ball. That's hit fairly deep to center field. Center fielder camps under it. And didn't realize how many outs there were and throws it in. That's the third out. So at the end of five, it's 5-2, Hopkinton. Top of the sixth inning. New pitcher for Hopkinton, Alex Barker Hook, our only hyphenated player on the team, was a little league phenom. He was a man amongst boys when he was in little league. He was probably six foot tall while he was 12, and he's still six foot tall today. He's facing Doherty. Throws him a fastball for a strike on the outside corner. Well, the score's 5-2, top of the sixth. Coach Simos has got to be happy with the effort. And there's a ball in the back on the number. Doherty takes first base. That sounded like it hurt. Doherty, not me. It didn't hurt me a bit. Andrahan at the plate. Ground ball over to Kelly. Foul ball. The cat over there, Brendan Kelly. like to thank John Fisher, Josh's dad, for helping out with the scorebook today. It's a thankless job, but somebody's got to do it. There's a line drive down the right field line. That's down. Here comes Doherty. He's going to be waved in to score. Andrahan's going to stay at second base. Now the ball's thrown in. What for? I don't know. There was nobody backing up. Kester there, it's five to three. It's an ill-advised throw by Cole Glassburn. He wasn't getting anybody. There was nobody heading to third base. No so Chuck, no Chase Chuck ran. He's got a runner in scoring position. Barker hook throws, it's low. Got warm up activity in the bullpen. Things are getting a little bit tight here in the top of the sixth inning. Nobody out. There's a strike on the outside corner. Connor Kelly warming up the sophomore. Coach si Simos is very high on. Barker Hook throws it. Ground ball to McKenzie. No. Handrahan gets back. Mackenzie fielded the ball, threw over to Cole Glassburn, trying to catch the runner off second base, and everybody's safe. So now Barker Hook finds himself in trouble. Two runners on, nobody out.
this is a problem. This is an issue. Kester playing inside the cut in third base. Ball outside. One base at a time for Bridgewater Raynham. Kind of cool uniforms. They got their names on the back. Kyle Brow is the hitter. Um, Alex Barker Hook calls time. He wants to talk to McGuire. I'm not sure whether it was ill-advised for Ben to go to second base to catch the runner turning or just throw over to first, but it is what it is. Hook to the plate, just missed. I don't know whether that was inside or low, but looked good from my angle. You at home could be the judge. Glassburn sneaking in behind the runner at second base. Hook to the plate. There's a strike. Outside corner. Brow waiting for the pitch. The ground ball over the shortstop. They get one. They don't get the runner run scores. So, Hopkinton got a play here for runner taken off. They're going to throw through. Both of their middle infielders are back. Let's see if Barker Hook's going to throw over to first base. No, it goes to the plate. Foul back. Things getting a little tight. Five to three to the score. Top of the sixth. The runner's going. Ball's thrown through. No. A swipe bag. Throw was there, but the runner was just in there ahead of him. Nice arm on McGuire. Two ducks on the pond. One swing of the bat. The score will be tied. Ball squirts away from McGuire. Not far enough for the runner to scamper home. Doesn't look like he's got a lot of speed anyway. Hopping in bench getting a little bit tight. A little more animation out of Bridgewater Raynham. There's a breaking pitch down. Foul back. Coach Simos wants Alex Barker Hook to work this hitter and for the outfielders to hit their cutoff men. There's a ground ball. Foul off his foot. Connor Kelly still warming up in the bullpen. Jarrett playing a little bit in in right field. That ball's down low. Barker Hook's really having to work hard this inning. Came in with the lead, still has it, but it's in danger of 
there's a ball. He walks him. Looked good, but there's a walk. Bases are loaded. Will that bring Coach Simos off his bucket? Non-conference game really doesn't mean much in the terms of the standings. Richie Amaral at the plate. I got the wrong hitter there. There's a strike. Ross Schmidt, I think, is the hitter. I do like their unis with the numbers, with their names on the back. I do like that. There's a ball down low. No place to put Schmidt. Barker Hook has just got to work this hitter. Hope he can get a strikeout and induce a fly ball. Breaking pitch outside, not getting the call. My mom called, just so you know. So Schmidt finds himself ahead in the count. There's a little pop-up over the right side. Kelly's going to get it. And now there's two down. Barker Hook is almost out of this jam. Catcher Chris White hit a double down the left field line his last time up. A lot of wear and tear on his legs today going back and forth to the mound. And there's a swing and a miss. He wouldn't have caught that, wouldn't have caught up with that with a nine iron. Runners will be off on contact, so anything hit in the gap, and there's a breaking pitch. Hit over to Glassburn, picks it up, throws to Kelly, and Barker Hook gets out of the inning. So we'll be back for the bottom of the six. The score is five to three, Hopkinton. Tommy Amersino gonna face Austin Hartzell, who came in last inning to relieve Connor Walsh, who was having control troubles. Remember, Amersoni can drop a bunt down any time. He hits a ground ball over to first base. And he slides in head first. Pitcher covering. Nice job. Pitcher's got to feel their position. Doesn't always happen in high school ball. Drew Rancatori steps to the plate. One down for Bridgewater Raynham. Hartzell for a freshman has got a little bit of gas in that arm. Ball's foul back. Rancatori waiting for his chance to add to the hit parade today. Ball's fouled away into the softball field. Or off the backstop. Be nice for Hopkins to get a nice insurance run here. Make things easy for the top of the seventh. Ball low. The sun was out and kept things nice and warm, but it's not that the sun has creeped behind the clouds. It's just getting a little windy and getting a little cold. There's a pop up out to second base. Shortstop under it. Barry makes the catch. 
Two down. Hartzell's making quick work of the Hillers. Ronnie Seamus back in the lineup. Started behind the plate today, was pinch hit for. By McGuire, he's re entered, and that ball's low. Very impressive sophomore catcher. Hitting in the five spot. Ryan Kester on deck. Ball's up high. A little two out rally be nice here. Be nice to send Bridgewater Raynham home with a defeat. Seamus went down to get that one. Foul back. So right now, Coach Simos has got three catchers, McGuire, Sheamus, and Rankatori. Fast ball is up high. That is an embarrassment of riches for any high school coach to have three guys you can put behind the plate. That ball's down low, and Sheamus will take a walk. The Hillers can pull this one off. It'll be a happy Kester home tonight with Tara Kester and her teammates beating Norton 5-2. to two. Girls softball. There's a throw over. Once again. For those of you at home, it just usually doesn't happen this often. There's another throw over. They're pick happy. It's got to be 20, over 20 pickoff attempts. And nobody's come close. Only bad things can happen. You keep picking over. You throw it out in the right field. And then the law of unintended consequences comes into play. Pitcher should just worry about Kester. Another throw, four in a row. This kid is keeping me from my dinner. And the lights are on at Fenway. Yeah. Block, throw down to second base. They had him. Head first slide on the turf. Seamus a little slow to get up. Umpire's going to ask him if he's okay. His left wing is a little bit uh, a little sore. Coach is going to come out and check and see if he's okay. It's his non-throwing arm. So we'll be back in a moment. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose, and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of Naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal Naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining Naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Seamus shook off his uh, injury. The athletic trainer was out there. Oh, Seamus on second base. Kester with a chance to pad Hopkins' lead. There's a strike right at the knees. There have been so many pickoffs and mound visits. We're running low on battery here. 
Tom Nappy went out to the uh, HCAM vehicle to make sure we didn't don't run out of uh, power. There's a back pick. Um, I just don't know what to say. The inside move by the pitcher. They're so worried about the runner. Just concentrate on the hitter. Oh, that hit him on the back and then hit the bat, but hit the bat first. So that'll uh, get the force in play. Hartzell really didn't want to do this. He's got to face Brendan Kelly, who tripled earlier in the game. And there's another mound visit. If I'm the pitching coach, I just say, just throw strikes. A good hitter, keep the ball low. And if I'm the umpire, I'm asking for overtime. Right field, they're playing very, very deep for Brendan Kelly. Break and pitch in there for a strike. Maybe that's what he told them to do. Throw this kid a break and pitch because he'll kill you fastball. Playing straight away in center field, straight away in left. Back to back curveballs. Impressive for a freshman. He's got that much command of his breaking stuff. Now Brendan has to shorten up a bit. Doesn't want to have a fastball sneak by him. Will he throw three in a row? Hartzell steps back off the rubber. ball outside. We got fresh battery, so if we have 10 or 12 more pickoff moves, we'll, we'll be okay. We'll finish the game. Count is one and two. Pitch, throw down his third, and he is out. So at the end of six, the score is 5-3, Hopkinton. Top of the seventh, Hopkinton up 5-3. Last call for Bridgewater Raynham. Jack Berry, Ryan Goonan, and Brett Doherty. Connor Kelly into the game. Coach Simos is really, really high on this kid. He's a sophomore. He's pitched three and two-thirds innings. He's yet to surrender anything. He's got a zero ERA. Tall, lanky young man. This game is getting close to three hours old. That ball is inside. Barry jerked away from that pitch. That's a strike. One and one. Coach Samos must have a lot of confidence in Kelly to bring him in a situation. Close out the game. And there's a strike. It's one ball, two strikes. Nothing fancy, just throwing strikes. There's a curveball. Oh, he almost went for that one. Coach Simos asked the first base umpire for a little help. Thought he went around. First base umpire says no. Counts two and two. 
And there's strike three. Sit down, young man. Almost time to hit the bus. One down. Nice bender by Connor Kelly. Froze Berry. Berry's might do some helmet tossing in there. That was a beautiful pitch sequence. Ball upstairs. One ball, no strikes. Bridgewater rain him down to their final two outs. That ball's a little bit low. Connor Kelly working really quickly. Unlike the Bridgewater Raynham staff. There's a strike. Oh. I called that one too soon. It's 3 0. Oh. Tough to judge inside outside here, but it looked like it was right over the plate. And there's ball four. Same spot. Didn't get the call. Brett Darty, the third baseman, going to face Kelly. Kelly gives a turn, tur shoulder turn, and there's a strike. Just to let Goonan know he's over there. Throws over, back easy. Kelly to the set, to the plate, breaking pitch, beauty. Had Darty thinking of himself on that one. And there's another breaking pitch, strike three. Ride some pine, young man. Nolan Anderson re-enches the game, the big burly first baseman, face Kelly. 5-3 Hopkinton, two down. Top of the seventh, runner on first base. Ball inside. Coach Simos is right, this kid's got some nice velocity and a way better than average breaking pitch. There's a swing and a miss. That was by him. One on one. Be a nice victory for the Hillers if they can pull this one out. Only lost one time. There's a breaking pitch for a strike. He's got a lot of confidence in that breaking pitch. Now Anderson's got to wonder. He's seen his other two teammates whiff on breaking pitches. What's coming? The heater? Or the Uncle Charlie. The Uncle Charlie down low. Two and two. Will Coach Simos go back to back with a bacon pitch? Ground ball. Fielded by Kester. He should squeeze it. And he does. Ball beaten into the dirt. First and second, two down. Chase Chuck ran up. I think he's done much today. Forces all around. A tough break for Connor Kelly on that one. That ball was just beaten into the turf and there was nothing he could do. This ball gets by Sheamus. Runners move up to second and third. Heard Coach Simos telling his outfielders to hit their cutoff men should they get a base hit here. Kelly backs off the back of the rubber. He finds himself in a little trouble through really no fault of his own. He's pitched really well. Ball low, nice play by Sheamus. <laughs> J 
Chakra and the last man standing for Bridgewater Rainham unless he can get a base hit. Is a ball. Three balls, no strikes. First base is open. Is a strike. Seems to have a lot of poise out there, Connor Kelly. There's a ground ball, the third base. Off one hand, and he got him. Threw off one foot, threw over to Kelly for an out, and the ball game is over. So, the final score for the final time. It's the Hopkins and Hillers 5, Bridgewater Arena 3. We thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.